performance art was called body art in those days, a term I like much better because the unity of the artist and his or her idea is so neatly expressed, whereas the term performance art suggests that someone else could be hired to perform your idea, as in the performing arts or theater and dance. Anyway, when I founded Franklin Furnace in 1976, I was so stuck on the intersection of word and image that I called the performance art program Artists Readings and only gave up two years later after every single artist chose to manipulate the performative elements of light, sound, relationship to the audience, media, props, costume, and duration as part and parcel of the work. Eric Bogosian, Slavery, a text with intonation, 1977. Joan Jonas, Juniper Tree Fairy Tale, 1978. Michael Smith, Baby Icky's Birthday Party, 1978. Dara Birnbaum and Suzanne Kuffler, um, Untitled Performance Analyzing Lesbian Overtones of Laverne and Shirley Television Show, 1978. Gina Pane, I don't know how to pronounce this, Kokiana Fra Angelico, 1981. Okay. Well, here's a direct contradiction of my theory that performance artists use their own bodies to create their work. This is a performance by Guy de Conte for which he hired two actresses and wrote a script. They each describe identical objects, like the paintings behind them, but in completely different terms, suggesting that no one person's view is the same as another person's. This brings me to the subject of body and mind. Fiona Templeton, Experiments in the Destruction of Time, 1983, is five feet tall and performs in a five-foot square. Rachel Rosenthal, Traps, 1983, analyzes the moment when you remember that you forgot to close the door. Donna Hennis, Reentry by Total Immersion, drives back from California in time to arrive on February 22, 1979, at 8.30 p.m. when the performance is scheduled. Dead Dog and Lonely Horse, Bill Gord and John Malpee, take on the winner and loser characters they perform to the point where Lonely Horse draws high cards out of a deck and Dead Dog loses every hand. Twin Art, 1980, identical twins discuss how identical products are sold to us as so very different and so much better. Street Art is loads of fun because the artist is performing for an unwitting audience. Yvette Helene, Pedestrian Project, 1992. Julie Lafine, Various States of Duress, 1994, involved her donning the fabric all over the floor, which turned out to be a gigantic dress, stuffing it into a cab and driving it off. Performance and installation were merged on many occasions. Ichi Ikeda, Water Mirror, 1988, was comprised of water from all five boroughs. Anne Hamilton, U.S. representative to the Venice Biennale a few years back, created and wore this twig suit in 1984. Jan Fabre, It is Kill or Cure, 1982. Jan is famous for sheathing chandeliers with beetles, but in this performance he had sand trickling while film played. Ken Butler, Hybrid Antics, 1987, created all the instruments you see out of tools and household objects. Endurance is a theme unique to performance art that in some circles has come to define the term. How many performance artists does it take to change a light bulb? I don't know. I left after four hours. Nigel Rolf, The Rope. He's wrapping his head in a ball of hemp, symbolizes the relationship of Ireland and England. Women artists have chosen to use performance art because it is a supremely flexible form that does not have much art historical baggage. So they can do and say whatever they want, including talk about sex, instead of serve as the object of the male gaze. Eleanor Anton, Help, I'm in Seattle, 1987. Eleonora Antonova, her black ballerina character, is victimized by racism, unfair labor practices, bad art, and just plain loneliness. This performance is memorable for me because a candle set her hair on fire, and an audience member who received a lifetime membership in Franklin Furnace 
put it out with a fire extinguisher. Meanwhile, Eleanor never stopped performing. She is also well known for a conceptual performance carving a series of photos of her body during a weight loss program. Jo Andre's 1985 film performance illustrates a broad generalization I like to make, which is women tend to perform in the dark, while men tend to perform in the light. My theory about this is that it has something to do with women's feelings of comfort with the interior space of the vagina. Theodora Skipitaris, Sky Saver, 1979. Theodora Skipitaris is now well known for designing and building puppets which populate her performances, but in 1979 she examines the apron as a cultural symbol of Greece, her homeland. The worst insult you can give to a man is to put your apron over his head. Diane Tor, Go Go World and Amoebic Evolution, 1983, discusses her fate as an alien who is obliged to work in strip joints to make a living. She deconstructs the system. You look in the eye of your customer. You dribble spittle over your nipple. You look at him through your legs, and he's sure to put a dollar in your G-string. Sherry Galky, This Is My Body, 1983, examines the portrayal of the female body by Christianity, especially the desexualized notion of virgin birth. Sherry Galky was a member of the feminist art workers who, in this 1979 performance, Heaven or Hell, demonstrate that collaboration is how to survive. Their forks are so long they can't feed themselves, so they figure out to feed each other. Leslie Labowitz performed as part of a 1981 series entitled We'll Make Up a Title When We Meet, which came to be known as LA London Lab, featuring women performance artists from London selected by Susan Hiller and women performance artists from Los Angeles selected by Suzanne Lacey, who met in New York to perform at Franklin Furness. Each set had a resident critic, in the case of the English artist, it was an American, Karen Four Walker, and in the case of the Los Angeles artist, it was an Englishwoman, Moira Roth. This performance, Sprout Time, starts in darkness with Leslie Labowitz lying naked on the bed of earth and telling us that because her mother was an Auschwitz survivor, her youth was filled with images of death. So when she became an adult, she decided to make art out of life and started selling sprouts. At the end of the performance, she sells the business to an audience member. <laughs>